morning, boys and girls. It's time for another day of preschool at Little Lions. Let's start out with our months of the year. You must be getting good at this one by now. Ready, everyone up? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, then we all turn around. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, then we all sit down. Thanks for singing with me. Let's take a look and see where we are in the year on our calendar. Well, we are still in the month of, what letter is that? A. April. We are still in April. I see that yesterday there was a 21. Any idea what comes after 21? Did you say 22? You are correct. 2-2 two, two says 22. Let's put that in our calendar and then you can help me do some counting. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Ooh, our calendar is getting filled up. Good counting. Let's check out our days of the week and see where we are on that. Are you ready for some more singing? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And if we crawl up from our 22, boop, 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 boop. what day do we have here? I see a green card. And it has a W for Wednesday. Let's go over and find our matching W Wednesday card. Let's see here. Oh, here's a match. W says W Wednesday. Let's put that up here. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd. We're getting close to the end of the school year. May is almost filled, or April is almost filled up. And then we'll put May up here. And then we only have to fill May half up. And preschool will be all done. And then there's June, July, August. Those are your summertime. And then you'll be in kindergarten. Ooh, that'll be exciting. The weather today is a little strange for Salina, Kansas. It is actually rainy outside. I don't see any sun at all. The street lights are actually still on, even though it's mid-morning and there's water on the ground. I even heard some thunder this morning. Did you hear any of that where you live? I sure did. Well, I wonder if we can find our rainy tag. We don't use it very often. Oh, there's the rainy tag. It starts with an R. Let's put rainy up here. And that actually matches our season. Spring is known to have a lot of rain, but in Kansas, it just doesn't rain real often. But sure enough, we have a rainy day in spring today. Please stand up. It's time to find your right hand. And we're going to put it on our hearts and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did you know that every country has a different flag? And every flag has a story behind it. Our flag has stars and stripes. There are 13 red and white stripes because there were 13 states when we started. Then there's a dark blue area with a whole lot of stars. If you find a picture of a flag and you count there, count those stars, there would be 50 stars because that's how many states we have in our country. 
That's an awful lot of stars to count. All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about Zacchaeus today. What do you remember about Zacchaeus? Well, I remember he had a job that a lot of times people were not honest with. So people didn't care for Zacchaeus because he was not always honest. He sometimes took more money than was his. But I also remember that Zacchaeus heard Jesus was coming to town and thought, I'd like to get to see Jesus. And that's exactly what he did. He came up with that plan. He was too short to see Jesus just standing. He, could, he couldn't see over the tops, but he said, if I climb up in a tree, I'll be able to see Jesus. And that's exactly what he did. He climbed up in a tree. And sure enough, as the crowd came into town following Jesus, he could see him. And of course, Jesus, who knows everything, knew Zacchaeus was trying to look for him. And so Jesus went right over to that tree and said, Hey, Zacchaeus, come down, come down. I'd like to stay at your house tonight. And remember the rest of the people thought, what? Jesus is going to stay at the house of a sinner? Someone who cheats and isn't honest? But remember, they were forgetting. They might not have done that sin, but they had done other sins, just like I have done sins, just like you have done sins. That night, Zacchaeus was talking to Jesus, and he said, I'd like to make right some of the things I've done. I know you are saving me from my sins, but I've, I've hurt other people with my actions. You know what? I'm going to take half of all my riches and give them away to the poor. And then anyone who I've cheated, I'm going to pay them back. If I took $1 from them, I'm going to give them four back. If I took $10 from them, I'm going to give them 40 And he did that. He wanted to show that he was sorry for what he had done. And Jesus was able to assure Zacchaeus, Hey, I came for people like you. I came to save sinners. What a relief that is for you and me because we are also sinners. And if we had to do it on our own, we could never make it to heaven. We, we do those angry words and we say no to our parents and we don't want to do our jobs sometimes. And all of those are hurtful things. They're sins. But Jesus took care of them all. He lived that perfect life and he died on the cross to pay that price. And he didn't stay dead. He came back to life because he is the only one stronger than death. We learned a Bible verse last time. I don't know if you remember it, but it talks about how Jesus wanted to save all people. This verse starts, it says, God our Savior. Savior, that's the word saves, because that's what Jesus did. He saves us. God our Savior wants all people to be saved. And that's in the Bible in 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Does it say he wants some people to be saved? He just wants all tall people to be saved? Or all short people? Or all rich people? Or all poor people? Nope. It says he wants all people to be saved. Can you help me? Let's try it together. God our Savior wants all people to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. Thank you for helping me with that. All right, we learned a song about Zacchaeus. Can you stand up and do the Zacchaeus song with me? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior walked that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Thanks for singing with me. Let's also sing our alphabet song. I bet you know most of these letters by now. Let's look up here and start way over here with the A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I know my ABCs. 
Next time, won't you sing with me? Can you guess what letter we're on? Do you remember? Did you say the letter O? You are correct. And here's our little song. The O says ah. The O says ah. Every letter makes a sound. The O says ah. You have to open your mouth up real big like a giant O. Ah. That's what O says. Except, O is another one of those vowels. Remember those vowels we learned? I wrote them up one other time. Oh, those vowels, they're they the ones that stick all the words together. You have to have vowels to make your words go together. But those vowels make reading a little tricky. So these are the vowels. We learned A, E, I. Sometimes I put the hat and the feet on that to make it easier to see. A, E, I, O, and U. And the vowels are very interesting because they make their sounds. We said the A said, ah, the E said, eh. I said, eh, and O says, ah, oh. but they also just say what their letter is. A says A, E says E, I says I, O says O. Oh my goodness, that's just so confusing, but that's the way it works. That's why reading is such hard work. So on our picture today, we have a picture of each of those sounds. Ah, Stridge has that ah sound. And this instrument, I wonder if you know what that is. When I first saw it, I thought it was a clarinet, but I thought, nope, C -c clarinet starts with a C. But oboe, that is an oboe. And oboe starts with that O sound. So we have an ah for ostrich and the O for oboe. Mm, gotta remember, it says both of those things. And as usual, Vowels, since they're usually found in the middle of the words, it's hard to find a lot of words that start with them. So my can is not very full today. I only have a couple of things to show you to help you remember that the O says ah, and sometimes O. Oh. Mm, the first one here, a little bit of something you might eat for breakfast on a cool day. Some oatmeal. O is at the beginning of oatmeal. I like mine with a little cinnamon on top. Mm, that's good stuff. Oh, here is a cute animal that likes to play in rivers, jumping in and out of the water. Do you know about the otter? That is a river otter. Otter starts with O. Ah, oh, otter. Mm, this is a delicious snack. You could have this snack today since it's an O day. It's an orange. There the O says O, orange. Oh, here's the same animal we had up on our, our alphabet line, ostrich. An ostrich is a strange bird. It is huge. An ostrich is taller than I am when it's full grown. And its body is so huge, it's, its body is like this big, just the body part, this part. Maybe you've seen one at the Rolling Hills Zoo. And the funny thing is, is its legs, its knees bend the opposite way that you would expect. A lot of animals, the knees bend out like this, but an ostrich's bend on the back side. Ostrich starts with O. And I have one more animal for you today. This is an ocean. Oh, hey, ocean starts with O. Ocean animal. I have an octopus. This is another amazing creature. Swims through the ocean at the down at the bottom. He has eight legs, and he is a very, very clever animal. He can solve a lot of problems when scientists study him. Oh my goodness, octopuses are so smart. And he actually can shoot some ink out if the predator comes and wants to eat him. He will shoot out some dark, cloudy, ink-like substance, and then while the predator is stuck in the darkness, he can swim away into his hiding place. Very interesting animal that God made. So those are some O things we have. O's are one of the easiest letters to write because an O looks just like a circle. And the big O and the little O both look like a circle. So it's a really easy one to remember. You just go right around and that's your O. The math concept I'd like to talk to you today about actually also starts with an O. It's called opposites. And opposites is when you have two things that are completely not alike. 
I'm just going to show you a book to try to explain what opposites are. Here is the book I'm going to show you. It's called Dog Days. So you see some D's here that you recognize. Wait, this is a word you can read. <laughs> they made this O look like a paw print, but that's an O. Ah, uh, D, ah, uh, G. You know all those letters. Dog, dog days. And it says that there is some opposites. There's that O, opposites. Oh, there's even an O in the middle. There's some opposites in this book. Let's see some examples of opposites. I think you'll get the hang of it. This says that Bowser is big, but Dottie is small. Big, small. Those are opposites. Big is not small and small is not big. Those are opposites of each other. Hmm, what else do we have? It says, Largo's ears are long. Oh, look at those long, long ears. <laughs> but Cutie's ears are short. Short, long. Long is not short, and short is not long. They're opposites, long and short. Let's find some more. Ooh, this guy's name is Groucho. It says, Groucho is mean. He's probably a good guard dog. Buddy is nice. Looks like he's ready to play fetch. Mean, nice. Those are opposites. They mean completely different things. Mean and nice. Oh, here is a French poodle. It says, Purdy is clean. Not a speck of dirt on her. But look at this dust cloud. It says, Dusty is dirty. He's scratching up a storm. So dirty and clean, those are completely different meanings. They're opposites. This book's kind of neat. It has to fold back together to make the page. This is a fluffy dog. Shaggy is hairy. Hello, Shaggy, there's your eyes. I see them now. But it says Buzz is bald. Hairy and bald, those are opposites completely different. And a few more on our last page. It says Daisy is awake, <laughs> but Spot is asleep. Awake and asleep. Completely different. Those are opposites. And the last one, it says Fluffy barks, hello, and Curly barks, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Those are opposites. So I wonder if when you look around your house, if you can figure out some other opposites. You know, I actually sent a game home that you can keep to play at your house. I still have one here to show you. But this game shows you all kinds of opposites. The game that you have has all kinds of pieces. And if you lay them all out, you will find that there are opposites in your game. And the great thing is, if you're not sure which ones are opposites, the pieces only fit together with one other item. So if I try to put in with sad, it doesn't fit. But wait, happy and sad, those are opposites and the pieces fit together. So I know that they're a match. And that in one with the dog, the opposite of in is out. So I have in and out. And you can keep looking through all of your pieces and find more. Open goes with closed. Oh, we have two cookie jars. One is empty, one is full. You can look through all of these and learn some new opposites. If you're not sure what the word says, you can ask if you're not sure what the picture is showing. For instance, this one, you might have to think for a little bit to realize the arrow is pointing up the girl is going up the stairs, and then the girl is going down the stairs. So up and down are opposites. And of course, whenever you are done with a game, it's very important to not leave the mess for someone else to clean up, but gather it up and put it back away so that you can use it again another time. We'll leave my opposite item there, and I have a couple of things to show you that you can work on if you have your folder. 
One of them is what we were just talking about. It's opposites. It's not a difficult activity, but it's something that shows you again some different opposite things. You have this plain paper and you have several little pieces. And there's a words that someone can help you read. Just ask someone in your house what they say, or maybe you can figure them out. But the opposites are all here. So I have a piece of smooth fabric, and that would go here. And then I have a piece of very rough fabric. It's very bumpy, and that would go there. See, I can, they don't look quite the same, but they're similar. Here's an interesting one. This piece of foil is very shiny. I can see my finger reflected in it. So that's shiny, but this is called a wax paper. It shows some light, but it's not shiny. It's dull, so that's a dull one. And then the last one leaves big and little. Oh, you can even read the word big, big. That's one that you know now. So that's a simple activity that you can do. You can use your glue stick to stick all those down, or you can leave the pieces off to redo the activity another time. But that's a simple activity you can do to think of opposites. Oh, I should grab a pair of scissors. Let me just snag a pair off of my desk. This is for our letter of the day. O is for owl. Wait a second. I thought O said aw and o. Oh. Guess what? When O and W get together, they say, ow. I don't know why O gets to say so many things, but it does. So O is for owl. And my paper starts as a giant O. And then I gave you several pieces of paper to cut out. Some of them are easy. Keep your thumbs on top. So triangles are pretty easy. Have those nice straight sides. Guide your scissors so that they just go on that line, that's, that's hard work. You really have to keep working at that skill. So a triangle is not too difficult. But look, when I put that up here, it becomes the owl's head. And it's like these two tips are his ears and this one is his beak. But now these, these are a little harder to cut. This is a challenge for you, but when you do challenges, you get better at things and you grow. So remember when we do circles, I have my thumb on top and my thumb on top. I keep my scissors straight and I just keep turning the paper. And the paper turns and turns and turns until it produces a circle. There's one. Let's do one more and then I'll show you how all of a sudden it turns into the owl's eyes. We do a yellow circle and then we'll add the actual wiggly eyes. And that will make our owl face. Look at that. Hello, Mr. Owl. Just like that, it starts to look like an owl. And then these two funny shapes, when you cut them out, will become his legs. And you will have O is for owl. If you would like to color in your O either before or afterwards to make it look like the feathers of an owl, you could do that. Many owls are brown. Baby owls are white. They have downy white feathers. Completely up to you. Or you could make your owl colorful because your project. And the last thing I have to show you will remind us of our Bible story. Oh, I bet you know who this man is. There is Zacchaeus up in the tree. And who's talking to him? Yep, that's Jesus. He's saying, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. And guess what? On the back side, you can glue the song and the words so that you can remember how to sing that little song. You have all the pieces you need to make this project, even the words. You can glue this, use your glue stick, and glue it on the back. Oh, and this, this is gonna be some more challenging cutting. And remember, you don't have to sit down and do all these things at once. If you were at school, we wouldn't do them all at once. We would have recess in between, we would have some work time where you could choose to be doing bikes or kitchen or texture table, all of those fun things. But come back later and do another project. Use your scissors to go all the way around the fluffy tree part. Here's your tree trunk. You can go around that and then glue those two pieces on to make your tree. And then you have your two people. You know which one's Jesus and which one is Zacchaeus. 
You can color those in and glue them in their spots. And then you can use this to tell the story to other people. And you can tell them how Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and how Jesus loved him and wanted to see him too. And how Jesus loves you and me and came to save us from our sins. What a wonderful message that is for us. All right, boys and girls, I will see you again on Friday. Have a great day. Bye.